Hello Glider Geeks, uh, this is Clements from Jazz in the Air. Today I would like to share with you a, a pretty scary situation during a recent aerotow takeoff. On that day I was flying with water ballast, that's the maximum takeoff weight for my glider. And I had briefed the tow pilot to fly at a speed of 70 knots. So let's see what happens. Faster, 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 faster. Faster. Whew, that was scary. Did you notice what went wrong? Let's look at it again and uh, slow down the video a little bit. You can see the tow plane lifts off before the glider does. If you normally fly unballasted gliders, you're probably used to the glider taking off before the tow plane. But if the glider is heavy, it needs a higher minimum speed to fly than the tow plane. Here's where the problem starts. Instead of staying in ground effect and accelerating until 70 knots, the tow plane starts to climb immediately. It doesn't take long and I start to scream faster, faster, faster. You can see that my airspeed is just barely above stall speed, which is about 52 knots. Unfortunately, somebody else had just started to transmit over the radio, so my calls for faster, faster are not getting through to the tow pilot. For a moment, I thought I should release and land straight ahead. However, I was afraid that my speed was just too slow and that I would stall immediately if I would pull the release. You can see that I can't keep up with the climb rate of the tow plane and I start to drop down into the wake turbulence. Eventually, the tow plane is leveling off and starting to pick up some speed. That allows me to fight my way back above the uh, wake turbulence. Here the tow plane starts to resume the steep climb rate and the speed starts to drop off again. Once again, I yell faster, faster. Finally, we reach my targeted tow speed of 70 knots and uh, I can assume the correct tow position behind the tow plane. From that point on, the tow is really perfect and the tow pilot is maintaining 70 knots throughout the flight. A few minutes later, he dropped me off in a great morning thermal and I had a great soaring day. There are obviously two key questions here. First. How could this tow have gone so wrong? And two, what can we learn from it? But before we answer these questions, let's take a look at what should have happened instead. Here's a takeoff behind a similar tow plane on another day. Okay, 9-3 Yankee, behind you is Victor 1. I'm full of ballast, so heavy. Uh, I need about 70 knots, uh, please, at least in the first turn. And then uh, and at least 65 for the rest. And we'll just go northwest, but I don't think we'll need to go very far. Roger, the 70 knots is beginning, then 65 knots northwest, so there's not drinking. Oh, it's half air, so we're not drinking. We're taking off water, eight, water, double.
shoot straight ahead. Elliot Field. Fowlship Field. Beyond the Elliot Field. Let's watch this again. The tow plane lifts off at about 50 knots, just as in the prior tow. But here's the key difference. The tow plane stays in ground effect until the tow plane reaches 70 knots before it starts to climb. After that, the climb out continues gradually with the tow plane always maintaining 70 knots. Here you can see the difference between these two toes side by side. So let's get back to our two key questions. First, how could this tow have gone so wrong? I was quite puzzled about this. I know the tow pilot well and I know he's an excellent pilot. I've towed many times behind him before, and I wouldn't hesitate to tow behind him again. I also like to tow behind that particular tow plane. It has a lot of power and has no problem even with heavy gliders at a high density altitude. So my initial thoughts were, did I forget to brief the tow pilot that I was flying with water ballast? Had he not heard my request for a minimum tow speed of 70 knots? After the flight, he and I talked about this, and it turns out None of these was the real reason. He had perfectly heard and understood my briefing of 70 knots. He had even played back to me 70 knots minimum. So what was the issue? Well, it turns out that the airspeed indicator in the tow plane is in miles per hour instead of knots. My request was in knots, which required the tow pilot to convert it into miles per hour. In doing so, the tow pilot made a simple mistake. He converted the wrong way. 70 knots are about 80 miles per hour. But in the mind of the tow plane, 70 knots was only 60 miles per hour. And the problem is that 60 miles per hour is only 52 knots. And 52 knots was my stall speed. And that explains why the situation was so scary. We were just towing barely above the speed at which my glider stalls. We all make mistakes, and this is a very easy mistake to make. So that brings us to the second question. What can we learn from this? I think there are 10 key lessons here. First, heavy gliders require a higher minimum speed. Second, heavy gliders can even stall on tow if the tow plane flies too slowly. Three, the minimum tow speed requirements must be part of the briefing between the glider pilot and the tow pilot. Both pilots should have it on their checklists. Four, we have to remember that airspeed indicators in tow planes are often in miles per hour, whereas gliders usually have the airspeed indicator in knots. 5. Glider pilots should brief the tow pilot about the minimum tow speed using the units of the airspeed indicator in the tow plane. 6. The airspeed indicators in tow planes are often not very accurate, so sometimes it might be better to just tell the tow pilot 10 knots or 10 miles per hour faster than normal. 7. The glider pilot should insist that the tow pilot confirms back the minimum tow speed. 8. The tow pilot should stay in ground effect until the minimum tow speed is reached and only then assume a gradual climb. 9. Glider pilots must pay close attention and immediately speak up when a faster speed is necessary. 10. Communications should be clear and include who they are directed to. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something about the necessity of a higher tow speed when gliders are flying heavy and ballasted. And it's important that the tow plane is briefed before such flights, otherwise we can get into a very scary situation. Thanks for watching and see you next time.